Right, so this is a very specific question uh, from one of our members. And the question reads, I'm interested in best practice for AES3 clock distribution. I've always considered that if the downstream device syncs from the upstream one, then the AES3 protocol will by and large take care of clock propagation, giving the downstream device um, given the downstream device recovers the clock from the upstream signal. Almost, also, most AES input circuitry will natively handle sample rate conversions to an internal sample rate in the 4896192 kilohertz range. The reason why I'm asking is that I've experienced situations where broadcast has dictated that front of house clock from them. This caused a lot of reconfiguration of the front of house system in order to make it stable. And I was wondering why clocking it from the broadcast might in some circumstances be necessary. So I think the question is really, why does broadcast win on who does the clock? Okay. Uh, that is interesting. And it is a pain in the ass. Uh, difference is what he's talking about 4896K. We're talking about considerably bigger than that. Many, many hundreds of times bigger than that. Because an OB truck, an outside broadcast truck, all the monitors, all the EVS, which is digital VT, VT trucks, the sound desk, the vision mixing desk, the cameras, every monitor in there is clocked to the same clock. It's not just a little bit of audio. The embedders, the router, and the whole truck's routing system, the satellite truck, they're all clocked together. It's not just at 96K. Ks, I don't know, we're talking about picture signals here. It's megahertz and things. It's not more than that. It's not just sound clocked, and of course, and I have had a case, was if the sound desk input from a VT machine isn't clocked right, it won't play anything. Yeah. And the whole truck has to be the same. So a little bit of PA down the end, I'll tell you how much, even for me, doesn't get much thought out, from a TV production team will be considered, well, it won't be considered at all. Right. We have a truck that cost 20, 25 million pounds there. It all has to be clocked together and sounds just a little bit at the end of it. Right. <laughs> Some PA company wants to be the master clock. Well, they've got no chance whatsoever. <laughs> because okay. it is every single camera, every single monitor, there might be 78 monitors, screen monitors in the truck, four EVS machines, that's a digital multi-track video recorder, sound desk, vision mixing desk, comm system, all have to be clocked to go down one IP bit cable. And the guy on the other end went, well, we're running 48K and we want it to our own clock. Well, the answer is he will be told in very short shrift. No. Now there'll be a big argument between whoever's making the program and a front PA desk, a front of house man. Yeah. Well, a front of house man better have a lot of power because he's going up against the full, you know, and if, if it's going to ITV, ITV will ring up and go, no, you're clocking, because that is the power of TV, if they want to push it. Right. It's different so how to can call... someone then prepare themselves if to be ready to, if they want to bring this, their desk into mix their band for, I don't know, Jules Holland or whoever, um, Graham Norton, whatever, Somebody's coming in with their bands. They, how can they prepare to be using the clock that's dictated? Or do they? Well, they, if and if they have to. So <laughs> that's an interesting point. Uh, a, they should talk to the mixers involved ahead of time, and certainly. Is this something that, uh, that that the sound supervisor would? Uh, okay, so we've got Radiohead coming in this week. Yep. Do you? proactively talk to the radio head people and say well actually by the way yeah no well what i do is hopefully yes i'll get an input i'd ex i'd expect a sheet from them with their requirements on as well their rider basically yeah and i think i'm going oh i haven't seen you for ages whoever's yeah hi nobby fancy a pint yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, what have you got and what can we do now on the, both those shows uh, they're not going to be running front of house anyway they're not doing the mix. Jules Holland, uh, Mike and Tudor are doing the mix. They're just doing monitors. Ah, oh, okay. 
there are some people in the audience and there might be a bit of front of house there. Maybe they'll chuck up a couple of speakers. But that's not the point. The mix is done by Tudor and Mike Felton. Right. And they will get what they want. The monitor mix. So they will talk and go, okay, what do you want here? You monitor mix. Is it digital? Okay. But if not, it'll just be split analog ways. Yeah. Like, yeah, do what you want. But it's going to have to be analog. But the interface, and on those shows, definitely TV will win and get what it wants. Yeah. Because Graham Norton, it's one one band coming in, playing a little number in the corner. It's not an important part of the game. And the producer and director can give a shit about it. That's not necessarily true. You know what I mean? Yes, that's but not, yes, it's not priority. That's not the major part of it. The fact we've yeah. got you know, Tom Cruise sitting on the sofa and this band in the corner who's doing one three-minute number at the end of a part is making a fuss, is going to get no, no. And they're just not doing front of house mix anyway. It's just a monitor mix. Yeah. Okay. And Jules, yeah. So and it's got to, we want the monitor mix to be good because we want the performance. Yeah. But we're not interested in what the audience are hearing in the studio. Yeah. It don't matter. Jules, you know, there's probably a couple hundred people in Jules' studio. Yeah, Most of them are hanging on from the bed. So, you know, we're not interested in them. But I don't know how many people watch it on a Saturday night. Friday night, whenever it is now. Yeah. So they will be done from that. Okay. But going back, if it's in the middle of a long run, then TV will have to go, okay. And that probably means going analog. Okay. So you would you would solve that problem, get or get around that problem literally just by going analog. If we have to, yeah. If you have but an that unsolvable means, clash. Yeah, because and that's what I tried to bring up recently at Earth Reach. That was all right when there were splits in. But if you've got a digital stage box and monitor desk and front of house desk all digitally linked now uh, you might have to introduce a, a split rack into a system that doesn't have a split rack for many years there was always a split rack just to get from to monitors and front of house yeah well that's not necessarily true now in tv studios even though we still have analog microphones going in they go into a wall and then in a separate room there are a to d's remotely controlled from the desk yeah. and once they're in that room then it can be routed anywhere in the building by Dante, Ravenna, whatever the system we're using say yeah Maddie as he's around there so it's not necessarily true everyone covers a split rack with them I think they do <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in which case you'd have to then reroute all your stage microphones to the split rack and then from the split rack to the stage box, which can all be done, mainly you ask if you turn up in the day. So if we speak in advance. Yeah, so all of this is really it's but, advanced yeah, planning. <laughs> it is. And sometimes you can't, but most of the time, yeah. yeah try and, and I'd say that to people in any any sphere of uh, certainly sound and other points. Yeah.